Is that your friend? <laughs> What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. It actually turns out to be quite a nice Monday for everyone in the crypto verse. Now we were all very worried about what was going to happen with this crypto bill over in the European Parliament and you could see right here the Committee on Economics and Monetary Affairs decided to vote against the ban of proof of work mechanisms underlying popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So this is very good news. Great way to start the week off for Bitcoin. So everything's cool. You don't have to freak out, but we are not out of the woods just yet. In fact, guys, what I wanted to talk about specifically for Bitcoin right now is that this could be the calm before the storm. So I do want to look at some exciting models today. Now, we are going to talk about the biggest concern right now. We did just get that sigh of relief coming out of the European Parliament, so that is good news to hear. But as I said, there is still something much more concerning on the horizon that does have a lot of investment investors worried about what could potentially happen. So I do want to talk about a short-term risk for Bitcoin. However, having a look at some of this data that we do have, we can see what the whales are doing, and it does suggest that the bottom could be potentially near, and we could even hit a new all-time high for Bitcoin as soon as June or July, sometime this summer. So we're going to have a look at that. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, definitely consider it. And uh, there was something very interesting that one of the whales is doing. We'll get into that in just a minute but ultimately you can see right here guys still not too much has changed we are still being supported very nicely on this upward sloping trend right here so ultimately bitcoin is still just sort of dancing around in this channel or as you guys can see right here you know some people are saying this looks more like an ascending triangle however you look at it guys whether it you know be a wedge a channel a triangle ultimately we still are trending upwards and every single time that bitcoin falls down to these levels we get beautiful Beautiful support by the whales or whoever's purchasing it, right? Which means that there is strong buying support there. Now, as you can see, guys, we are continuing to dance around the exact level on the VPVR, virtually sitting exactly at $38,885 right now. But something very interesting is if you do have a look right here at this Ichimoku cloud, you can actually notice that we have been supported right here in this bottom region for quite some time. And if I actually go back to the last time that we had something similar, let me actually get rid of this VPVR because it looks a little crazy now. You can actually see that we also had that support right here with the exception of obviously that, you know, COVID crash. It was a bit of a black swan event, but you could see we were building that structure right there. And once we broke out of it, Bitcoin continued upward. So that could be a sign that this is in fact the calm before the storm. Some people are still worried down here about the CME futures gap. There is always the potential that we, you know, could go down to those levels. But ultimately, as you guys can see, we've maintained not only all of these upward trends, but the most significant one being this white trend right here, which marked the absolute last bottom before we had the move to the upside. And that's basically sitting at around $29,200. And you can see right here, very simple, guys, if we follow this, Bitcoin is, in fact, continuing to trend upwards, you know, putting in this type of pattern. So I do believe that it is still looking quite bullish for Bitcoin. Not really much has changed. One thing a little bit scary, just going to point out. Now, remember the other day we saw that we had Bitfinex whales starting to go long. And that kind of signaled the price move. Well, now we have uh, these particular whales looking to short. So you could see there was this massive, massive spike in shorts about three days ago. Does this mean that they're anticipating, you know, Bitcoin to go lower? Was this just the hedge against the potential news coming out of the EU? And, and now we're starting to see them, you know, sell, sell out of these uh, short positions. I don't know, but could also mean that we could be looking for a bit of a short squeeze. So just keep that in mind. But I do want to just point out what crypto analyst was, was mentioning. And obviously, if you have a look at this Bitcoin chart, we do go in these cycles. Now, we've had all of the bearish crosses, right? And keep in mind, it is a ebb and flow, right? You could see 
right here, we've already had the bearish crosses done. You had the 50 and the 100 on December 27th. You had the death cross on January 14th, and you had the 100, 200 on February 7th. Now, what we're actually looking to do as we have this uh, correction is to have a strong bounce back and start to put in some of those bullish crosses. So, um, he marks some of the dates possible, March 25th, the 50 and the 100. The Golden Cross, that's happening April 23rd, roughly, just kind of looking at what we have going on right now. And the 100 to 200 happening on June 7th. Now, if that was the case, this would uh, signal that essentially you would have Bitcoin break out above that $46,000 level that we, we really need like 46400 to get completely bullish, right? Then we, we hit that resistance here at uh, 56000 come back down, retest around the 44000 area. That's where everybody is just like, okay, forget it. It's over. You know, we got rejected. We're going lower. And then we move to the upside. And if we just look at these repeating loops, as he points out, you could see a $72,000 Bitcoin sometime around, you know, June or July of this year. So obviously that's provided there's no more crazy news or black swan events that come out. And like TA analysts pointed out, each time the nine year support is hit, a dynamic target is reached in a maximum of 305 days. And if we just have a look at this chart right here, we actually hit this in January, in the beginning of this year. So as a result, he says it's very likely that the dynamic target will be reached once more, which is usually about a 211% increase, or at least a 211% increase from where we are today. So that puts, you know, by his chart somewhere higher than 105,000 by September at the end of this year. So I know a lot of people are feeling bearish saying, you know, it's not possible for us to go to these prices, but you have to understand that, you know, Bitcoin can consolidate for quite a long time. And then when it does have its moves, it goes absolutely crazy, right? Absolute blast off. So what is happening right now? Well, this is what's essentially what some of the investors and some of the traders are doing. So you have Bitcoin's put call skews have come off sharply from the highs seen following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So in other words, fears of an extended decline have subsided. So this is actually a good thing. This is showing that investors are becoming more positive. So you can see right here, they say the six month uh, put call skew saw a brief dip below zero over the weekend, implying a relatively higher demand for longer duration calls or bullish bets on Bitcoin. So in other words, they're not really being you know shaken by these fears of you know everything happening with the war and they're still feeling pretty positive about Bitcoin. Mike McGlone, senior analyst over at Bloomberg, he says the fact that one of the best performing and most volatile assets since the financial crisis, Bitcoin, is showing relative buoyancy in an ebbing tide for risk assets in quarter one uh, may pretend the crypto's maturation toward digital collateral in a world going that way anyway. So essentially, you know, considering that these types of moments are when you see massive, you know, risky investments being sold off and Bitcoin's just kind of chilling, just kind of hanging out, not really going too crazy. This is a sign that Bitcoin is maturing. In fact, one of the things that we knew was going to happen to Bitcoin inevitably was the increase of institutional adoption and new data has highlighted the significant role of institutional investors in Bitcoin transactions. And check this crazy number out. Currently, institutions account for over 99% of all Bitcoin volume emanating from transactions valued at over $100,000. The report notes that institutional interest in crypto accelerated for the third quarter of 2020, where the share for larger transactions has never dropped below 90%. So we do, in fact, have a lot of big players continuing to turn to crypto, even though it may not seem that exciting. Now, a lot of people say, well, if they're buying, why is the price not skyrocketing? Well, you have to understand that they do this strategically. If they just went in on a crazy spot market buy right now, they would send the price through the moon and it would completely shake the markets up. These guys are very clever when they're buying. Some of them are even doing it over the counter, OTC, and those aren't even being reflected in the traditional or like in, in the, in the um, exchanges where we can actually get the data from, right? It's all happening sort of behind closed doors and these sort of lump sum moves. But the one thing that is concerning everyone and why they're looking into things like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is because, and I, I, this is, I'm not kidding you guys, this is the entire Google Trends history since 2004 of the topic 
inflation. And right now, it is at a 100 as of this month, which means that right now, this is specifically for the US, but you can check the global as well, this is the highest search ever for inflation, which means that people are very scared. They are seeing their dollars deteriorate, 7.9% CPI, highest in 40 years. Absolutely crazy. We have gas going through the roof. We have commodities skyrocketing. And, you know, these people are banking on hopefully getting something back for their tax returns, but it's not looking too good. And the government is in a very tricky situation. We do have the FOMC meeting coming out where some people are afraid that they're going to be raising rates. However, we know that they really can't do that or at least if they did, it would probably be detrimental. Not to mention the fact that these actual inflation percentages are probably lies anyway. It's probably a lot higher even than what they're telling us. So you can see right here, US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said, we're likely to see another year in which 12 month inflation numbers remain very uncomfortably high. This is coming right from Janet Yellen, guys. The situation in Ukraine has exacerbated inflation and upcoming inflation reports will show, quote, Quote, further evidence of an impact on U.S. inflation of Putin's war on Ukraine. Now, this actually prompted Elon Musk, our good old buddy Elon, to go over on Twitter and say, what are your thoughts about probable inflation rate over the next few years. And I want to just read this sort of back and forth between him and Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor says, U.S. dollar consumer inflation will continue near all-time highs and asset inflation will run at double the rate of consumer inflation. Weaker currencies will collapse and the flight of capital from cash, debt, and value stocks to scarce property like Bitcoin will intensify. To which Elon said, it is not entirely unpredictable that you would reach that conclusion. As a general principle, for those looking for advice from this thread, it is generally much better to own physical things like a home or stock in companies you think make good products than dollars when inflation is high. He says, I still own and won't sell my Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Doge for what it's worth. So, you know, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on Elon Musk, but it was nice to, to, to sort of see him, even though he has issues with the mining and, and all that stuff that, you know, it's not green enough, which we'll get into that in just a bit. But ultimately, that was pretty cool to see coming out from the camp of Elon. So... I was waiting to put today's video out. That's why it was a little bit late today. I wanted to see what they did say. So they did end up voting against the ban on proof of work, which is really, really awesome because like Jake Chervinsky had actually pointed out, you know, he said, make no mistake, if they did manage to ban proof of work, then they'll come for proof of stake next and every other civil resistance mechanism after that. This isn't just about environmental impact. It's about the right of non-state money to exist. Their strategy is divide and conquer. Let's not fall for it. But nevertheless, they didn't vote for it. So it was actually nice to see that. Now, it's still not perfect. For example, last Monday, New York State uh, Senate submitted a bill to enforce a three-year pause on cryptocurrency mining across the state. In their intentions, crypto mining should be suspended until the Fed discovers its effect on the environment and climate. So we are still quite early. There are still those that think Bitcoin mining is the absolute devil and it's destroying the environment. And then there's other who realize that there is a lot of Bitcoin mining moving to a greener um, approach, right? I mean, we've seen it. We, it was over half. It was like 54%. And I think so, some even say it's close to 70 now of renewable Bitcoin mining. So, I mean, it, it's not like the, the miners aren't aware of this, right? It's not like they're just sitting there like, nope, we're just going to keep, you know, mining our dirty Bitcoin. Like, no, the world is shifting. This is good. And a lot of people still think that they're late to the party. I will tell you, you are early to the party. The fact that we are still having these discussions about whether or not we should ban proof of work mining clearly shows you how early we are. In fact, Raul Pal, they have this crypto sort of versus the internet on a log scale adoption chart. And, you know, essentially what they do is they have the total internet users, which was right here. And that you can see this is from 1992 to 2006. And then on the bottom on this axis, they have the time right now showing you about where we are in crypto. So if you look at where we are right now, sort of on the timeline of crypto adoption and crypto users, that would put us right around 1997 for the internet. And you could see that there was continued explosive growth, you know, after that point, which does put crypto on to about 5.1 billion crypto users by, you know, as soon as 2030. So that would be 
a very large amount of users. And by the way, a lot of people go, oh, well, the internet was different, right? Why, why would people have the, you know, why would people even be incentivized to use Bitcoin essentially? Well, he says, this is what drives the adoption. Clearly, everyone owning a part of the network creates alliance of interest, which leads to exponential growth. And simply put, blockchain is just a better way of doing things in the digital exponential age. But he says, in a digital world, everything trends towards zero in costs driven by Moore's law and other phenomena. But blockchain changed all of that. It created verifiable and immutable digital scarcity, allowing an explosion of use cases in the layer one, layer two, an application layer. So obviously this is like the internet. It may even potentially be bigger than the internet. Not in the sense of like, you know, information, but in the sense of monetary policy and actually taking back the right to your own property, right? And I think a lot of people are realizing that and clearly we're seeing the data. We're seeing these massive transactions, 99% of them being from institutions over 100,000. You know, we're also seeing Bitcoin working quite well, uh, maintaining its level quite well in a time of mass uncertainty. And you're also seeing the put call skews coming off sharply showing that a lot of traders and investors are feeling quite bullish. And on top of that, we still continue to be supported by this trend that started at the absolute beginning of the year, since the beginning of the year. Every time we fall below this, we instantly wick back up. And yeah, we're still trending higher. So guys, as I've been saying, you know, if you are looking to trade this, now could potentially be a good time. Um, there always is that chance though, that they do that kind of scam wick to the downside. So just be careful with that. You know, obviously falling below 34,200, we got some big issues. And once again, 46,400 is that level we need to break to the upside. Everything else is still just noise, just sideways price action dancing around this channel. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. Uh, you, are, you are the reason that I make these videos in the first place. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Of course, if you're not subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, definitely check the links below in the description. And if you're looking to trade, check out these videos popping up right here, right now. Be safe. And of course, stay crypto and peace out.